Hey there and welcome back with an update to CSGO Lens 2. Today we are going to talk about electricity and water. As always, I'm gonna boil down all the insights in this video for you. To be honest, today it's not that crazy much because two of the things we are seeing in this video is something we dearly love and already know from Cities 1, but there are some really good overhauls to the system of electricity and water, which I'm going to quickly boil down to you. So first of all, in this frame, I'm going to stop this here. We can already see um, most of the changes that have been done to the network. So first of all, let's start with the easy part. Pipes and also electricity are now connected to the road network directly. So everything that is connected to a road has access to pipes that are, well, you know, pipes and cables, I should say the pipes are feeded or fed by um, water plantations whatever source you have we're going to talk about these water sources in a minute and electricity is also connected the good thing about this is now you don't have too many ugly overground cable networks and overground or like the nasty um, putting down of pipes and then you know whenever you look to the underground it looks like a mess this time around it's not and you can see there is a network connected you can also see in this frame over here we've got electricity availability and electricity trade because trade is a thing and also battery charge so we do have two more options than in the first game so the first one is you can store energy as in modern day mass uh, you know simulations we have a huge battery park that we can fill so our solar power that is um, available at day um, is being able to be stored because mostly during daytime you will have an overproduction via nights uh, or versus nights where you don't have production at all so you can store that in your battery parks but you can always store so much if you produce too much energy and your batteries are fully charged you can actually trade your um, overproduction and you can also buy um, energy from the external sources we're gonna have a little frame of that in a second and you can also see that the availability of um, electricity is not the main factor you also need to think about how far can electricity travel because every network can only carry so much voltage or so much energy per distance that means you need to put down some transformers that will be able to transform the high voltage into low voltage stuff or yeah, i'm not sure if that's i think it's from dc to ac basically um and that goes to the household so you will still need some overground electricity uh, cable networks uh, to bring the high voltage stuff into the location and then you can uh, transfer that via a transformer into your available network. A lot more realistic, a lot more clean also I should say and um, that's something I'm really looking forward to see how that works. You can also tell now how every house is actually catching the energy and this is basically one of the transformers I was just talking about. This building over here is mandatory and then you put down the um, overground cables as you can see as a connection to this building once it's there it's all connected and in a certain distance from here or in a certain distance in terms of cables you'll be able to see that everything is fed by energy but um, as soon as you hit overproduction or uh, to less uh, to little production um, your districts will not be fed by energy anymore as you can see in this frame let me just skip back for a second um, they actually showed that very nicely um, so as soon as your energy is not uh, enough in this space and you can see that in this space over here in particular there are not too many transformers available so the uh, nearest transformer should be that one over here which is already feeding this entire location and as soon as you don't have the optimum this entire part over here is not delivered anymore and uh, that can cause a problem so it might be more helpful to put another transformer in this area but you've got to plan this wisely because maybe you do not want to have um, you know these ugly things uh, across the river. Now, speaking of, you do have various sources um, from where you can actually get the energy. This is, by the way, the outside connection. You can trade this with your neighbor cities and then you can actually sell or buy energy from there. As you can tell from over here, we have various um, production availabilities. We do have the wind turbine, we've got a solar park, we've got the coal, we've got nuclear power, we've got a hydro dam, we've got um, the gas like basically uh, a gas factory and do i forget did i forget anything i think that's about it um so you've got a quite nice choice of renewable or fossil fueled energies um what they also said and this is pretty easy to say but also very nice that we have it seasons and temperatures will affect your usage of energy so in winter there will be a lot more heaters running so there's a higher demand of 
electricity, while in hot summers, the ACs will actually run a lot more, so there's also a higher demand. All right, so um, next up in our list should then be what to do with energy and storage and so on and so forth once you need this in your city. There are several options, as we were already talking about. You've got the ge uh, geothermal um, factory is the one I forgot, which uses obviously the heat from the um, underground heat that is available in our wonderful planet. Now, this is one of the bigger transformers, and I should say that um, this, by the way, is a battery pack. I'm sorry, but um, as always, all these buildings are upgradable, so you can put more things to them to make them a more uh, usable and obviously more efficient. Um, so I'm really happy with the upgrade system. Here you can see putting another battery pack next to it. Very nice that we have it. But it's also time to talk about water actually, because energy, as we were talking about, has um, quite some options. But water um, stayed mostly the same. There are two main changes to the system. So the first bigger change, I'm just going to scroll through there, is basically that we have a new way where you find water deposits. This, for example, is an underground water deposit. So you can't put like a water tower anywhere and you got the water. This time you have to really look where is the underground water. And naturally these things are filling themselves again over time. But if you're pumping too much from them, they will not fill in quickly enough. So there's actually a very nice example over here. As soon as you have too many of these underground water pumping stations, it might cause this underground reservoir to go uh, dry out. And if it's dried out, it takes like a very long time until it's available anymore. You can, uh, again, you can also um, grab the water as always from the surface level, as you've known that uh, forever, ever. And um, you always have to put, you know, uh, effort into making sure that your sewage is not going into the um, direction that it will cause, you know, pollution where you're pumping the water. So always make sure to look at where the stream of water is going and as always in the later game you can build more efficient pumping stations and refurbishment stations where you can clean the water and uh, reduce the amount of sewage you have in general. Um, you also shouldn't put um, fossil fuel or dirty fuel stuff on top of the water reservoirs as you can see then the reservoir is basically spoiled and if you do use this for your citizens that will cause a tremendous amount of people being sick and ill as you can see over here the water is poisoned and spoiled and so you will have your entire districts that are going to be delivered with this water being ill, sick or even die from that and this is something you don't want to do. You can filter it over time, there is um, an option to filter the water but as always you always have to balance it out if you do put some pollution in you need a lot more filtration um, uh, to you know compensate what you have done uh, so this is very cool that we have a new way of doing this but as always as I said there is a way of having overgrown uh, water pumping stations as well and we do also have um, wa a wastewater treatment plants as you can see over here they are as well as you've imagined upgradable so you can put different things in to make it more efficient I think that's no secret anymore I'm a big fan of the fact that you can do this now um, and you want to avoid that things look like that um, our beloved uh, dirty water. I still little hint over here as much as I love the system I think they are overdoing it a little um, I, I thought the same way in Cities 1 maybe it is just to show that you know things are dirty but then again this is like such a big river uh, smaller streams I do know that they can look like that but oh boy this is crazy so I would have loved this to be a bit more subtle but hey it may cause you to be even more careful to not do that at all uh, but yeah so this is mostly all you need to know about that so sewage as always is the exact same as you knew it from the first game you can see you have to pay attention to the way the water runs and um, yeah make sure that you don't put uh, your water stations or pumping stations exactly in that stream because then you would have it this way. Um, before we end, we, we just stay on this wonderful picture of having people with dirty water. You can see in this menu you can also uh, have a good overview, same as with electricity. You can also trade water this time around, which is pretty neat. Um, you can also um, export sewage and uh, treat it, which is pretty good that you are available to do that. Um, not sure if that's maybe bringing in a whole lot of income or why you would do that, but okay. Um, and you can see the water availability in this area is still okay. You know, it's decent. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Um, as you can see, the output is insane. 1.3 million cubic meters of water. That's quite a lot, I guess. Um, but you can also see how much of the uh, different areas you have. This is like the little map to understand where certain things are. I mean, there's no deposit in here. 
there's no pollution, but uh, it's very good to know that you have everything in one hand. And that's all about it. I think there's really not that much more to talk about because the rest of the system is absolutely well known. And I'm very happy that they did not change too much because it was a good system. And I have a feeling they got rid of some of the annoying things and brought in a very good system that is a lot more realistic and will help to make the city more nice looking and more efficient. That's that. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you in the next one.